Hey friends, welcome back for another drawing episode with our Adobe Express drawing tools. Today we're going to be visiting ancient Egypt and we're going to draw a picture of none other than the Sphinx. So let's get started. I'm going to select the blue color here with my hard round brush. I'll make it a lot bigger and then open up your custom colors by tapping on this little button here. And when you see the custom colors, you can make this blue just a little bit lighter like that. Alrighty, now I'll simply paint and fill the canvas with blue. I'll make my brush a little smaller and then we'll use this bright yellow color right down here at the bottom of our canvas. You'll notice I've painted a little less than maybe a quarter of the entire height. We're going to now switch to the triangle brush right here. It's still one of the basic brushes and easy to find. Now I'm going to make my brush about 400 pixels or so. And with my brush sitting a little bit above where the yellow and the blue meet, I'm just going to draw across like this. Notice how I left a decent amount of space over here on the left and a small amount of space on the right. I'm going to make a shape that's narrower and leaving a nice gap there. This will be the head of our Sphinx. Now use the square brush and make it about four or 500 pixels, still with our yellow color, and just tap right here in the center. If you need to make this area bigger, you can simply draw across. Notice that this is asymmetrical right now. This side is not as wide as this side, but that's okay. I can use my triangle brush again, make sure I use it about the same size as before, pull across and add a bit of yellow right there. Now with my round brush at about 130 pixels or so, I'll just tap here in the center and add a little bump. Don't want it to come up too high. It's pretty small in the real Sphinx. Go back to the triangle brush, make it about 100 pixels or something like that. And now use the orange and let's create the face. Starting up here in the corner, I'll place the triangle right there and follow the line as closely as I can, like this. I'll travel down a ways here and then come down this way. So you can look at this zigzag shape and you'll see that this area here is longer than that. If you make any mistakes or want to change your mind about something, you can always undo right there. Next, I'm going to move across like this and then down like this. And then I'll just fill all this in with orange. On the other side, something similar here, just following along the edge there with the triangle brush. Take your time. And then you'll notice how we did on this side, an angle coming in this way. We're going to mirror that on this side like so and we'll continue that area right there. Let's make our brush smaller, maybe about 60 pixels or so. Now inside this orange area, I'm going to move towards the center and do the same on the other side, leaving a little space there in the middle. If you need to create more space, you can always use your brush with some yellow and just paint that out. From the right side, on the inside corner here, I'll place my brush down and move downward. I'll move slightly to the left and then move down and to the right. And you see what that does? It creates the shadow of the nose. Now I'm just going to fill in a bit more of this area and leave this area open, like it's catching some light. Making the brush smaller again, at about 25 pixels or so, I'm going to create a line for the mouth. Let's use a specific color with the eyedropper tool. Notice how I can choose a color from the canvas, in this case the blue. I'm going to carve into this area here and change the shape of the base of that triangle we painted before so that now it comes out and then back in again. 
one more thing I have to do with the face is create a little mark right here on the right side. What we're doing is we're using light and shadow to model with the same brush. I'm going to draw lines one, two, three right here. Notice that they are starting roughly where the horizon line is and then coming down. I'll travel over to this side and do the same. One, two, and three. It's okay if they're not perfect. And with the brush a little bigger now, maybe about 60 pixels or so, I'm going to use the same technique we did here to suggest a shadow on the inside of this arm for the Sphinx. So we'll come down here like this, stop roughly where we stopped here, and then down again with a nice triangle like that. And on this side, I'm actually going to come down a little ways and then travel off to the right and fill in this area here, leaving a little bit of yellow out there on the right side. Making my brush a little smaller, I'm just going to fill in this area right here and connect it. There we go. I'll make my brush just a little bit bigger. And once again, open the custom colors and use the eyedropper tool to select that blue. And starting right here in the neck of the Sphinx, we're just going to move down and to the right like that. And same thing on this side. In the background, we're going to make some pyramids. Using the triangle brush at about 200 pixels or so, I'll just tap here in the background to create one pyramid and then move to the left and move down slightly to create a smaller pyramid. Make the brush much smaller, 25 or 30 pixels, and paint down the side and over and up like so. I'll make it even smaller still and do the same thing on this pyramid here in the distance. Notice that I stop right here where the horizon line is. If you paint past that, don't worry, you can use the yellow to correct it like this. Using our yellow again and our round brush, we can put a nice sun up here in the sky. Here's something fun. You can make a wavy line like this, and that looks like clouds in the sky. And then you can tap a couple of times, make your brush smaller, and then just paint across to create some other nice cloud shapes. The smaller you make your brush, the further away the clouds will appear. And normally the clouds will get smaller as you move down towards the horizon. That's a good trick to know. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this one. I know it's pretty challenging, but you can do it. It might take a few tries. You'll get the hang of it. And this is a neat way to think about drawing things with just two colors and making them look three-dimensional. Give it a try. See you next time.